my whole life I've wanted to travel, I've wanted to tell stories, and I'm fortunate. I, I feel fortunate because I, I get to do something that I love to do. And to be able to travel the world, and it gives you, it, it does help as a human being because you're, you're living in, and, and as an actor I get to try and understand and learn many different things of life and different trades and uh, it gives you great perspective on on the world on life on people and I don't think you can help but grow as a human being all the all of the emotions that, that you have to go through whether it's like loving a girl or laughing outrageously at something hilarious or you know everything I've ever done in a film it requires this uh, this getting to some sort of emotional reality that, that is contrary to the actual setting that you're in. Being an actor is the first thing that I remember wanting to do in life. Um, I remember at 14, 15 years old, watching some classic films, not, well, spending months and months watching all the great classics, all the great performers of the past, and being so incredibly inspired by them and saying to myself one day I want to come close to doing something that good so that I think that that thirst or that drive to just achieve what I believe is something as good as you know those heroes that I have is what continues to make me want to uh, want to do this I call acting um, 3d anthropology or archaeology in a way that your actors are sort of out there digging away at um, at whatever, at sort of in the mine shaft of, of um, the collective emotions of human beings across, like, the present and the past and history. And the actors kind of have to bring back their findings um, and put them in, as it were, the, uh, the glass case of a motion picture. Every single character an actor takes on they need to treat that person as if they were real um, in order to feel the correct amount of responsibility for their existence because your your job is to is to create a real life breathing full rich multifaceted um, convoluted complex person and that's very difficult to do if you don't care about that person when I read a script I'm looking at uh pretty much two things. One is if the, the writer thought about the character and that the character could possibly exist outside of the script as opposed to just being used as a uh, pawn for a story. Um, and then the other thing I look at and wonder is if I could do something with it and bring myself to it and uh, make it something that would be entertaining to perform. Um, because I suppose that the most entertaining things to perform is probably the most entertaining to watch. Feel, feel it out, you know, and um, take the chances. And if you feel like uh, on some level it's grounded in some sort of reality, that's really the most important thing. I, I know that sounds like it might be an oxymoron to this crazy broad character that's grounded in reality, but it actually it is important to understand where the character is coming from, what his motivations are, you know, whether it's jealousy or you know insecurity or whatever it is, and then you just sort of like you know go with that and try to play these crazy big moments in a in some sort of real way. My preparation is always pretty much the same, regardless of whether it's um, you know 150 million dollar film or 1.5 million dollars or whatever it may be. Uh, I've got to do a lot of homework, and I've just got to be well equipped when I come onto the floor and, and, and I want to come onto the floor with ideas and I want to also be well prepared so I have the ability to have a freedom uh, to explore any avenue on the day and have fun. I think it's always really helpful to just incorporate anything that's happening in life into your into your work, um, obviously in a way that makes sense, um, but but you know, I think acknowledging it and, and sort of threading it into what you're doing is, is always helpful. I feel very lucky that I get to play characters that are so complex I can't help but love them because they feel real to me. Um, but that's that's most of the roles that I've that I've gotten to play. And you love them 
because of their flaws, not in spite of them. As an actor, there's a lot of control that we that we lose and we immediately ha uh, don't have the moment you start a project. You, you can do the best, you can give the best of yourself and, and have done the most amazing hey. research and, hey. and then the, the director takes it into an editing room for nine months with his editor mm -hmm. and it might be a completely different thing. So if you, if you think about it that way, the actor is the, is the, one, is the one element in a, in a project that has the least amount of in order for for me to feel strongly to sign on to something it's it's two things it's what the film represents as a whole um, which sometimes changes by the time I see the movie again I go oh it's a different message but it doesn't it doesn't matter my it's a, the feeling the intention that I have going into it as the bigger picture of the project and then you have to have or at least I feel like for me I have to have some sort of point of view where I feel like I'm the only one that can do this thing with that, with the, those words and with that, what that represents to me. I always get really excited about finding a character that um, has a really great, strong background to them, you know? And that's not to say that, you know, the, the girl next door can't be interesting. It's just very often she hasn't been portrayed in that way. And I'd love to see that, you know, um, because it's such a kind of default thing to just make her kind of cutesy and stuff. But it'd be great if it wasn't that way and if you could really add a backbone to her. And that's what I feel like I've been very lucky with, with the characters that I've played, that they've kind of come my way and that um, it's really just given me something to think about because you're just going to get lazy otherwise. If you don't have anything to think about, you're just going to get lazy and you're just going to start pulling moves that you know work, you know? When you get a chance to, to feel really emotional in something, uh, it's very cathartic. Um, or you get to be angry, it's great. It's all those emotions that you're sort of, you're not allowed to show in real life. You've got to be sort of in check. And it's, it's beautiful to be able to let rip. Um, so I like if I can move people or make people laugh or anything, it's, it's a joy and it's, I don't know. <laughs> I just, I really love it and I, I hope I get to do more of it. Action movies are, I think, more, even more fun to make than to watch for me because I'm, you know, I, I'm involved in them. So the stuff I learn and the stuff I have to do uh, is just incredible. I could never do it in my real life because I would never, it would never come up to that. But um, I think, yes, it's wonderful. Our body is, an, is a wonderful instrument. Uh, we can express so much with the body, the body language, the face expressions. Uh, and, you know, in so many moments in life, we don't really need to talk. We could, I mean, it even exists. You know, there are books about body language. But uh, it, it's an interesting story. To, it's an interesting thing to explore as an actor, too. I'm interested in challenges. I, I want to play characters that I don't know if I can do. I need to to feel that kind of walking on a tightrope, I find that really exciting. And, and I think that it's the only way that I can keep interested. My job is trying to play a character that will convince people that I'm that person. Uh, if you get a wonderful script like we did on this, um, that's not quite so hard to do because uh, it's, it's a ready-made story for you. And all you've got to do is to uh, make people believe that you're that person in that circumstance.